There's no place on Earth like Washington. Its forests, grasslands, and wetlands are home to more than 640 different kinds of wildlife. Come, let's explore Washington's wild side. In the northeastern corner of the state lie the Selkirk Mountains. This is home to the elusive moose. Weighing almost as much as a buffalo, moose can still move through the forest silently. A small band of woodland caribou also live in the Selkirk Mountains. They survive the harsh winters by eating lichens and mosses found only on old growth trees at high elevations. The osprey got its nickname fish hawk from the way it plucks fish out of lakes and rivers sometimes plunging its whole body in the water in the process. Osprey nest in other parts of Washington, too, and spend winters as far south as Argentina. Central to southeastern Washington offer an ever-changing landscape of basalt cliffs, rolling hills, grasslands, and sagebrush. Each spring, male sharp-tailed grouse gather at dawn on traditional sites called leks to perform their special courtship dance. Burrowing owls, unlike other Washington owls, live on the ground and nest in underground dens made by mammals. The long-billed curlew migrates from the coast to nest in the perfect camouflage of central Washington's tall grasses. Sage grouse depend totally on sagebrush for food from October to May. Males attract a mate by rapidly inflating and deflating their air sacs. Each March, Clouds of sandhill cranes stop to rest in the ponds and fields around Ephrata on their way to Arctic breeding grounds. Ferruginous hawks are attracted to southeastern Washington's open plains and basalt cliffs where they feed on jackrabbits and ground squirrels. Mule deer named for their large, mule-like ears, live in open meadows and rocky, brushy areas. They're the only deer that bound on all four feet like a kangaroo. Small populations of bighorn sheep can be found in the Blue Mountains near Walla Walla and on the rocky slopes west of Yakima. Some wildlife seem to get along without obvious sources of water, but for others, their lives depend on it. Central Washington's Columbia Basin area includes thousands of acres of life-sustaining wetlands. Unlike brown pelicans, white pelicans are buoyant and not built for diving. They bob for small fish in the shallow waters of places like Potholes Reservoir. Great blue herons gather here with hundreds of other wading birds to form huge nesting colonies in nearby trees. Only breeding age double-crested cormorants grow the white eyebrow crest that give this bird its name. Black-crowned night herons migrate here from Mexico to raise their young. The great egret, once killed for its graceful plumes, is expanding its breeding range and has nested here since the late 1970s. Western grebes are known for their elaborate courtship dances.
They make floating nests of cattails, reeds, and other marsh grasses. The black-necked stilt's legs are so long, it has to bend them to reach the ground with its bill. Although it looks frail, the stilt defends its nest by buzzing invaders like a fighter pilot. An avocet's delicately upturned bill enables it to sweep through muddy waters and across pond bottoms to find seeds, aquatic insects, and crustaceans. The male and female take turns incubating the eggs. Wildlife can also be found in the Cascade and Olympic mountain ranges. Elk live mostly in the timbered areas. When it's time to migrate to their summer or winter range, they're led not by the strongest and largest male, but by an old and wise female. These forests are also home to the black-tailed deer. Unlike deer and elk, mountain goats live above the tree line in rugged, steep areas. Equipped with rubbery foot pads, they rarely fall and hurt themselves. Because a black bear's normal diet is low in protein and fats, they prefer high protein and fatty foods. It's no surprise then that they like our food and our garbage. Spotted owls live in dense, well-shaded, cool forests, often coming back to the same nesting area for life. They don't tolerate even warm temperatures very well due to their thick plumage. The cougar, or mountain lion, is a highly specialized carnivore, eating mainly deer, elk, and porcupines. The foothills and lowlands of western Washington are rich in moisture. Thousands of miles of rivers and streams gather organic material from adjoining forests to provide food for many creatures. Hooded mergansers nest in tree cavities found along secluded ponds and streams. Steelhead and salmon fight their way upstream, the instinct to create new life urging them on. Wherever salmon spawn and die, bald eagles are likely to be found. Washington's largest concentration of wintering eagles is along the Skagit River, east of Mount Vernon. Each winter, thousands of trumpeter swans and snow geese migrate from the Soviet Union and the Arctic to the saltwater margins of the Skagit Valley to feed in farmers' fields. Sooner or later, all western Washington rivers meet the sea. The place where fresh and salt water meet is called an estuary. Estuaries are one of the most productive wildlife habitats on Earth. Eelgrass fuels the complex energy cycle of the estuary. Bacteria eat the dead grass, decomposing it into tiny particles which nourish crabs, clams, oysters, and small fish, like this pipefish. In turn, these creatures nourish other marine life. Yeah. Oh, 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 
California sea lions bring their dinner to the surface, bite it through the neck, snap off the head with a powerful shake, and swallow it head first. Orcas, or killer whales, eat mostly salmon, seals, sea lions, and other marine animals. About 80 individuals stay within 200 miles of the San Juan Islands. Orcas hunt as a coordinated group, much like wolves and lions do. The nationally protected estuary at Padilla Bay, east of Anacortes, allows Black Brant to feed in 7,000 acres of undisturbed eelgrass beds. Nearly three quarters of the seabirds of Puget Sound nest on Protection Island, a 400-acre national wildlife refuge nestled between Port Angeles and Port Townsend. Further south, protected estuaries at Willapa Bay and Grays Harbor attract tens of thousands of migrating shorebirds and ducks each April. When the tide is out, sandpipers probe the exposed mudflats for a protein-rich meal. These shorebirds attract the fastest bird of prey, the peregrine falcon, which dives at speeds close to 200 miles an hour to knock its dinner out of the sky. Along the southwestern coast near Long Beach, wide sandy beaches are common. Here, a marbled godwit probes deep in the sand, searching for crustaceans and worms. Snowy plovers scrape a depression into the sand to create a nest. In this species, only males incubate the eggs and care for the hatchlings. These are but a few of the wild wonders of Washington that share this land, water, and air with us today. Will they be here tomorrow? That's up to you. Here are some things you can do to help ensure their future. Learn about the wildlife in your area. Recycle and reuse everything you can think of. Support sound scientific management and research with your vote. Join a nature, conservation, or sporting organization. Start a bird watching club. Treat the natural world with respect and care. Contact your elected officials about wildlife and habitat issues. Get outside and enjoy this great state. <laughs>